This is Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here he is, the host of the podcast, A.W.R. Hawkins. Welcome to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart News podcast focused on guns, gun rights, the Second Amendment. Folks, you know, we sum these things up here under the banner of freedom. We always have. We always will. And that's because an armed citizen is a free citizen, period. Period. You want proof of this? Look at the tragedy in uh, in this. I'm not trying to segue to the news early. I'm just making a point. Look at the tragedy at the Waffle House in Antioch, Tennessee, where four people were shot and killed, where I believe four more were shot and injured. Waffle House has a standing policy, no guns allowed. Even if you're a concealed carry permit holder, which means you went through all of these state laws and conditions and regulations to acquire a permit so that you could keep and bear arms the way the Second Amendment says you should be able to keep and bear arms anyway. You went through all of that. Waffle House still says no. You have to eat unarmed in their restaurant. You have to eat defenseless in their restaurant. So what happens? Some looney tune wearing a green jacket and nothing else, so he's partly nude. He just opens fire. What are people going to do? They're just going to die. They can't do anything. Because Waffle House policy is that you cannot be armed in there for defense of your life. See, and that's why when I say an armed citizen, a free citizen, is because if you think about it in a sane world, When you're in other places that don't abridge your Second Amendment rights, you have the ability, when that Looney Tune rolls up and pulls out a rifle or whatever, you have the ability to shoot him in the forehead before he does what he planned to do. And that's how it should be. And I would hope, and I mean this wholeheartedly, that if you get the opportunity to shoot him in that situation, that your shot does not immediately kill him but that he falls to the ground and begs you to help him breathe or whatever he needs at that moment. And you choose not to help him because, well, you're too busy eating your all-star breakfast there at Waffle House. I mean what I'm saying wholeheartedly. No mercy on such an animal. None. But you don't get that option at Waffle House because they have a gun-free policy. So I'm juxtaposing Waffle House's policy with rational thought, with with the world as it should be. And in the world as it should be, law-abiding citizens are armed for self-defense and an armed citizen is a free citizen. He can defend his life and the life of his family and the life of his friends. He doesn't live his life at the mercy of some looney tune who shows up naked in a green jacket. That's all I'm going to say about that at this point because I'm going to get mad and it's no way to start the podcast mad. Anyway, folks, got a lot of shout-outs this week. Usual characters, Sherry Sanders, Mowbray, Banks, uh, Newhouse, others. Usual suspects on Twitter. I appreciate it. Folks, got an email from, uh, I may mispronounce this name, but shout-out to Jeff Apfel. And again, forgive me if I'm wrong in the way I pronounce that, but Jeff said, he goes, you know, we need a justification for semi-automatic ownership. And <clears throat> he wasn't saying that he needs a justification. He was saying that there are people who are arguing we, we don't need to own semi-automatics and that we need to present a justification to them. You know, I agree with what Jeff's saying, but it's quite an easy case to make. Semi-automatics, especially for those who are um, who can be overpowered physically quite easy, uh, Semi-automatics are a boon. They're a boon. And by that, I mean this. Let's say you're a female, particularly a petite female. <clears throat> you are by nature at a disadvantage. If a male, average size or bigger, wants to overtake you, you're at, a, you're at quite a disadvantage. Or you're elderly. Or let's say you're, you're handicapped in any way whatsoever. Or, <clears throat> or let's just say you're of a small stature period, whether you're a man or a woman no matter what your age. Semi-automatic, folks, is a quick way to level the playing field because of the number of rounds you get, because of the fact that that gun uses its own recoil to reload itself. That means less felt recoil, right? The same round in a revolver gives you more recoil 
than in a semi-automatic. And that's because some of the recoil dissipates as the semi-automatic uses the force of the recoil to reload itself. So the semi-automatic, is, it, is, it is a way to level the playing field and it allows the vulnerable to rise up. It allows the vulnerable to, to be on the level with the attacker. And in many cases, in many cases, to be above and beyond the attacker as far as firepower goes. All right. Number two, a semi-automatic. A semi-automatic is it's really a American ingenuity in many ways, especially if you look at it on the 1911 frame, which is the iconic 45. If you look at this, look at the semi-automatic success story after success story uh, as far as the simplicity and the dependability of that mechanism now those some of the most and i have to say some of them some of the most popular semi-automatics aren't american made they aren't uh, or american designed anyway they may be assembled in america but they're not american designed but you know you look at a sig sire or a h and k or glock uh, these are tremendous firearms they're 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 relatively cheap to acquire you can buy think about it this way you can buy a brand new glock for less than you can buy an uh, a a brand new 357 magnum uh that is a upper end quality you can buy a brand new glock for cheaper it'll hold more rounds it will cycle dependably it'll last longer than you will and it as i say it's a gun that someone who might be challenged physically can shoot without feeling the recoil that they would feel on a revolver or something else so the other thing is just just on the basis of practicality a semi-automatic is a genius way to go because of the firepower and by that i mean this think about the story i covered where it was in florida where seven people rolled up on a trailer pretended to be from the sheriff's department five of them kicked in the door there were three residents at home two residents armed with semi-automatic weapons two now think about what i'm gonna say you're gonna think i made a mistake i didn't two residents turned back five intruders one of the residents was armed with an ar-15 one was armed with a nine millimeter handgun both are semi-automatic weapons they turned back five intruders. One of the intruders at this very moment is on his way to what they would call decomposition because he took a number of rounds in the head. And I believe he crumbled to the floor right there on the spot. So, folks, the thing is, semi-automatic weapons allow a victim, allow a victim to level the playing field quickly. And not only to level it, but to dominate it. All right. And so we saw that in that story. There, there are many, Jeff, there are many other reasons to own a semi-automatic, many. But arguments against semi-automatics are stupid. You know, you'll have, and I know, Jeff, you mentioned law enforcement, former law enforcement making these arguments. I would love to see someone who lives in an environment where gangs are everywhere or lives in an environment where home invasions are, are common. I would love to see somebody in that setting who would choose to arm themselves with a five-shot revolver over a semi-automatic that might have a magazine that holds 10 to 16 rounds. I would love to see somebody try to defend that choice. It doesn't make any sense because especially if you live somewhere where you're facing the option of two to three attackers coming in at once, you're going to need all the rounds you can get because you're going to have to deal with all of them. And if all three are armed... Five shots won't get it. If all three are armed, five shots won't get it. So there and and Jeff, I'll make an even more rounded argument for semi-automatics, uh, maybe with an article or something to follow up. But I just want you to know there are plenty of reasons for semi-automatics. Uh, Richard Snyder, listen, Richard, appreciate you reaching out. Uh, Richard getting ready to buy his first Glock, I believe. He's weighing, I believe, options of a twenty-six and a forty-three. Either of those are great options. Here's the only deal. 26, you got a little more bulk, a little more girth. You get more rounds, though. The 43 is a single stack, so it's very narrow, easy to conceal, but less rounds. Either way, you get Glock durability. So that's your pick, Richard. Uh, Martin Capo, he is a podcast listener, just just uh, 
just sent me a thumbs up and I appreciate it. Uh, Dana White, listen, the Citibank stuff is ridiculous. Dana brought up the Citibank and that they're trying to use their bank policies to control us and to control our exercise of the Second Amendment. Exactly right. Pete, Pete Woj, is that how I would pronounce your name? W O J. Thanks for sending the photos of your gun collection. And, and you know, Pete, Pete sent an interesting email and he's talking about uh, perhaps seeking involvement, a work in the gun industry. Might encourage everybody to do that. There's not a certain way to go about it, but, uh, you know, I would encourage everybody who could to do that. And lastly, Brandon Edwards, I hear from him a lot and appreciate that. And uh, just emails me on various things, podcast related and otherwise related to articles. And uh, good to hear from you, Brandon. Keep the notes coming. Look, folks, uh, we got we got a busy podcast this week, real busy. Got a couple of guests, not just one, got a couple. So I need to get to the news and get through it as much as possible so that we can get well on our way uh, to our first guest, who is one of the Parkland Shooting School survivors all right now look now look we had as i said a, a an attack at a waffle house in antioch tennessee which is just a little bit outside of nashville my my important takeaway from this there are many but well i should there are numerous important takeaways number one waffle house is a gun-free zone shame on them shame on waffle house for demanding that you eat the all-star breakfast with no with no ability to defend your life. Shame on Waffle House. Waffle House, Papa John's, Domino's, they're all in the same boat on this kind of stuff. <clears throat> they put their they put their workers in a dangerous position. Their employees, I should say, they put them in a dangerous position. And in the case of Waffle House, they put their patrons in a dangerous position. You'll remember in 2017 I covered a story where a Waffle House waiter Waitress, excuse me. She used a gun to try to foil a robbery. What'd she get? Fired. They fired her. Because she used a gun. I can't believe you used a gun. Golly, why don't you just sit there and take it, huh? Why don't you just take it? It just makes me so mad. It just makes me so mad. Waffle House, gun-free zone. Come on in. Get you out. Start breakfast at the gun-free zone. Anyway. So first thing to understand, Waffle House gun-free zone. I think I made that point. Second thing to understand, the guy who allegedly attacked the Waffle House had all his firearms seized in 2017. I'm going to say that again. Had all his firearms seized. I said that slow for you folks on the left and for Shannon Watts, who I can tell the way she moves her lips when she reads, she's sounding things out. Let me say it again. Had all his firearms arms seized in 2017 they were taken away he had his firearm owner's identification card revoked because he was arrested by the secret service near the white house now how did he have guns to carry out this attack well police believe that when his guns were taken they were given to his father and they believe his father gave them back to him now i'll be honest with you if his father did that, the punishment should be unbelievable. But apart from that, I want to make a point. What this shows is that no gun control, no gun control, even confiscation, no gun control can stop a, con a committed killer, a committed attacker. And you people who trust, if we just had one more gun law, if we just if we just had universal background checks, if we just had gun registration, if we just had a gun owner's database, if we just had a we just had a, we just, had a, we just had a, you can have everything you want, and when you're done, a determined attacker will shoot to kill. As a matter of fact, the more gun control you have, the more likely it is that that determined attacker will shoot to kill, because the more gun control you passed, you pass. Excuse me the more likely it is that that determined attacker will find his victims unarmed. You see that? The more gun control you pass, the more likely it is that a determined attacker will find his would-be victims unarmed. So you keep passing that gun control and people will just keep getting killed. That's how it works. 
I think that's uh, I think that's conjecture. I don't think you can prove that. Oh, I can prove it. All you got to do is look at California. The Yunkville uh, Veterans Home, three people shot and killed. We had the attack on YouTube. Before that, we had the San Bernardino attack, December 2, 2015. The Santa Barbara attack, uh, May 23, 2014. We had the officers ambushed and killed in Palm Spring, October 8, 2016. We had the murder-suicide on the gun-free UCLA campus, UCLA campus, June 1, 2016. Do I need to go on? Do I? You got people breaking into cars every day in San Francisco. It's a party now. Every day. You leave your purse in your car in San Francisco, it's gone. Because they know you can't do anything about it. You've been disarmed. One more gun control law. Every time you do one more gun control law, you're just guaranteeing the would-be victim can't shoot back. That's it. It's not even up for argument. It's not even up... Not even up for debate, I should say. So that was news this week that had that attack, which was heinous. Now, James Shaw Jr. emerged as a hero in that attack because, of course, he was unarmed. He was in the Waffle House. But Shaw decided he was going to do something other than die. And what he did is he watched the attacker, and when the attacker had to pause to reload, Shaw, Shaw grabbed his rifle and jerked it out of his hands. This is old school stuff, right? This is old school. This is John Wayne kind of stuff. Shaw grabbed the rifle. The barrel was so hot it burned Shaw's hand, but he didn't let go of it. He jerked it away from the killer and threw it over the counter. That's the end of it. Little naked killer runs off. Just runs off. Now, they believe the killer might have a couple more guns with him because what they're doing is they're basing it on how many they confiscated from him. And they're saying that the AR-15 he used appears to be the same AR-15 they took away from him in 2017. So they're assuming he has every gun they took away from him, which means he may have a couple more on him even now. But James Shaw Jr., James Shaw Jr. shut down the shooting. He was gun. He was without a gun when he did it. He simply grabbed the killer's rifle and took it away. Folks, that's a hero right there. Now that is a hero. Now I know that uh, I know Shaw has come out and said he doesn't want to be called a hero or he isn't a hero. He said, to be honest with you, I was just trying to save myself. Whatever. You saved other people in the meantime, and way to go. Now look, folks. Got a big story on Yeti. Yeti coolers. Remember when they hit the market? They were going to be the deal for outdoorsmen. They were going to be the deal for hunters. They were going to be the deal for anglers. Yada, 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 yada. Now Yeti pops up and we are not going to do a business with the NRA Foundation anymore. What? Where did this come from? No hint beforehand. No warning. No explanation. We are not going to do the business with NRA Foundation anymore. Well, guess what? You're going to lose a lot of business, Yeti. A lot of people are already looking for other cooler companies. So Yeti, now they're the, now they're the big boy on the block. They've made their name. They've made their money. Now they're, they're throwing the people who put them there. They're throwing the people who put them there under the bridge. Yeti's done a lot of work with NRA friends, the NRA banquets and other groups like that. And now they're just cutting it off. So that means somebody got to Yeti. Either that or Yeti is a leftist group from top down anyway. And they finally just showed their true colors. Who knows what, but whatever it is, Yeti is now inviting all outdoorsmen and hunters to buy a different type of cooler, a different brand. Yeti is no longer the go-to. That's what Yeti was basically saying. They didn't realize it, but they're basically going, folks, we are no longer the go-to cooler for the millions upon millions of you who are NRA members, the millions more who are hunters, the millions more who are anglers. We are no longer the go-to cooler for you. That's what Yeti was saying. And guess what? So be it. Little crybabies. Little crybabies because they left. They felt pressure from the left because they... (laughs) They seem to be nice to the NRA. 
You know, I'm so tired of crybabies, snowflakes, whiners. So sick of them. Seriously, sick to death of them. Yet he can just take their little cooler and go home. That's fine. Time for other brands to step in. Hunters, anglers, NRA members, find you another brand. Reach out to me and let me know which brand you like and why. I'd love to talk about that. AWR Hawkins at Breitbart.com. Folks, uh, had a great, a great story uh, on these on these student activists. You know, this week we had another march. Uh, this time they were walking out in honor of the Columbine, uh, not in honor, honor of the attack, but in uh, the Columbine survivors and the and as a way to remember the Columbine attack. And I think what's funny is this: funny, not ha ha. Funny, strange, or funny, ironic. They they walked out to one of their goals was to secure what universal background checks. Folks, I don't know how to say this. Again, I'm going to say this slow for the, in case Shannon Watts is listening. I'm going to say this real slow, all right? And I'm going to try to enunciate as best I can. I know i got a pretty nasty, pretty nasty southern draw, but I'm going to try to enunciate this. We already have background checks. Let me say that again, all right? I'm going to say it real. Now, Shannon, Shannon. Shh, shh. And again, this is also, this is out there for Amy Schumer, too, in case she happens to be listening. Amy, you're still not funny. And uh, your last show tanked because American people know you're not funny. Everybody tried to make excuses for you, but you're not funny. If you're listening, though, I, I think you're kind of dull of thought. So if you're listening, let me say this slow. You listening? We already have background checks so these kids walk out it's a walk out for universal background checks it, we already have them not only that the parkland school shooter passed a background check to get his rifle i mean could somebody cue rod serling would he come in now and explain this See, here's what happens. People put the word universal in front of background checks. And I'll be honest with you, I believe David Hogg and the rest of them, they have no understanding, no comprehension of what the gun laws are in this country. Universal background checks are no different than the background checks we already have as far as the check itself goes. If we had universal background checks on February 14th, 2018, guess what? Parkland school shooting still happens. Period. A background check is a background check. The word universal means we would conduct them on private sales as well as retail. The left wants to institute that because it leads to so many other gun controls. That's the only reason they want it. We already have background checks. Well, give us an example of somebody that's got uh, universal background checks and prove that it doesn't work. That's not a problem. Look at California. They have universal background checks. I've already been through that disaster out there with you once on this podcast. And the bottom line is those background checks in California don't do anything to stop determined attackers. They won't do anything anywhere else either. Universal background checks are, are no impediment to a determined attacker, period. Folks, you're listening to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. We'll be back with a couple of guests right after this. Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Censorship is a key issue here, particularly for people on the right. Do you think it was addressed adequately? Definitely not. It was useful to name check Diamond and Silk. It was useful to check even politicians who had campaign ads that were shut down. But in every case, Zuckerberg was allowed to essentially dismiss the case and move on. Breitbart News Daily, weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. This is Bullets with AWR Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is AWR Hawkins. Hey folks, welcome back to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. Hey, great to have a, uh, a guest with us today from the uh, hor- horrendous Parkland experience. 
Kyle Kashuv is with us. He is a uh, Parkland school shooting survivor. He's been he's kind of been the voice on the outside of the of the establishment media. Uh, they haven't really given him the platform that they've given to many of the other students, and that's because Kyle has continued to, in my opinion, almost more than fight for a pro gun position. He's fought just for a common sense position because I've heard him not only say things positive about firearms or Second Amendment, but he's also taken time uh, to heavily criticize police response and different things, Broward County especially, uh, Broward County Sheriff's Office. So he, he is trying to be a voice of reason while all these other people are, are looking at this as an opportunity to push another gun law. So, Kyle, it is so great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hey, uh, listen, you're having this event. I know that uh, I don't want to give this guy any more press, but I'm just saying his name for the sake of saying it. David Hogg and his gang are having, a, uh, you know, another walkout in honor of Columbine. And uh, so you've decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something different also to mark that same day. I'm going to do something a little different. And I know you have some very prominent speakers that are going to speak, and, you, and I, I'm going to speak as well, but... Listen, tell me, tell me what you have planned and what your goal is. All right, well, it comes down to fundamentally this. Walkouts don't work. All right, they're a waste of time and they're counterproductive. They, they, um, they ruin the school system, and they really they ruin the entire day for, for, for kids, and it really messes up the school system. So what we decided to do, you know, in addition, it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't push policy. So what I came up to do was, look, let's educate the kids. Let's teach every single kid what there is to know about the Second Amendment and about this debate. Let's bring in very prominent people like Sebastian Gork and people who know what they're talking about. And let's just do a live stream, let's make a video and have the kids watch and let them learn because in reality, education is the first step for change. Doing a walkout is going to get seen on MSNBC views and it's going to do great for the ratings, but in reality, nothing's going to change. Right. And, you know, and I'm going to tell you, not that you need it, but proof of what you're saying I was reading in the Tampa Bay Times this morning for all the walkouts, for all the this and that. Uh, they said that voter registration for people, I believe, 18 to 21 is down right now. And uh, so, you know, this is not translating. It's just to your point. It's not translating into this giant gun control movement that they thought the walkout would lead to. Honestly, the entire movement has reached the stage where the agenda that they're pushing is just unreasonable and won't work, and that's why we've seen the change between actual legislation being pushed and and then pushing for voter registration. And but what's even worse than that is that the entire media is is, is fun. It's not funny, but it's peddling this movement as some some great change, but they're not pushing any policy. And with, like with people such as Ryan Petty. And uh, Andrew Pollack, who lost their daughters and are pushing real change, they both passed meaningful legislation that is going to protect the schools. They're not getting any media views. They're not getting any shout-outs at all. Today in the Time magazine, five of the kids by Obama, were, he was, they were the top 100%, 100 um, influential kids or people in America, and they were chosen. Right. And Obama was praising these kids, but in reality, we're, we're, we're blindsiding the other side. Forget about me. The people who are actually, the families who are pushing legislation are being left out of it because they don't get the views from mainstream media. Right, right. Well, going forward, beyond beyond what you're doing uh, uh, on the Columbine anniversary, and that what you're doing is important, I'm not minimizing it, but beyond that, what does, right. Kyle, what does Kyle have planned? What, what are you thinking that can be done? As you say, this is be, this is bigger than you. What I'm saying, what do you think can be done that will be meaningful? If 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 you could paint the road we're going to walk, what would we do uh-huh. going forward? What would be meaningful? You know, I talked to uh, many Republican legislators in D.C. You know what I heard? What I heard was that we have to defend the Second Amendment, and I think we have to do more than that. We have to we have to grow the Second Amendment because right now the Republicans are on defense, and you can never win by playing defense. You know, if all the Republicans are trying to do is defend the Second Amendment, they're not solving the issue itself. They're not solving the issue of, of, of gun crime. Right. And, you know, instead of just playing defense and just shutting down everything that Democrats are pushing up, let's push up our own legislation. Let's say, look, civilian gun use saves a million plus people 
every year. Right. Why are we not pushing for better for, for better laws for 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 broader laws to access a handgun and to allow civilians to defend themselves? Why are we not pushing for that? Right. Why are we not making it easier? Why are we not embracing concealed carry permits? Why are we not getting rid of gun free zones? These are the things that the Republican Party, which is now in power, should be doing. Right. Before midterms come up, you know. And look, I. The Democrats, and I say the Democrats broadly, but mainly the March for Our Lives, they're pushing legislation that isn't going to work. Right. It isn't going to work because fundamentally, A, it's most of the things that they're proposing are unconstitutional, and B, simply it won't work following statistics. Right. So it, it leads to some conflict of interest, whereas these kids are trying to push an agenda, but it's not going to solve the issue. So it leads if you truly want to solve the issue, you have to overlook your previous agenda and sit down and be like, hey, this is what we have to do. We have to make sure that we, we don't have gun-free zones because 98% of shootings happen in gun-free zones. <laughs> right. You know, you, what you're doing, Kyle, this is what I said to introduce you. It's, you're, I don't think of you as pro-gun. I don't think of you as pro-Second Amendment. I mean, I think of those as characteristics of you, but you're not singularly one of those. You're, you have held to common sense amid this storm, and it's amazing. And you're exactly right. To me, when people push all of these gun control solutions, quote unquote, but yet they preserve a gun-free zone, they haven't, they haven't really produced a solution at all. Because as long as there's a gun-free zone, we're, all we are is one crazy man away from another attack. All he has to do is be willing to do whatever it takes to get inside that zone. And that leads me, oh, to, yeah. that leads me to my very last question for you, which is this. What, what, I haven't heard you speak directly. I haven't heard you speak directly to armed teachers or armed school staff, and I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. I just haven't heard it. What's your, uh -huh. posi what's your position on that? Look, i said this many times. There's two things. A, I would love to see all the public funding money go to, to – uh, not public funding money. I would love to see all the funds issued for, for education to go to education. I want to see our education systems better because right now I can tell you they're pretty trashy. Um, what I really want to see is I want to make sure that our schools are safe. I honestly don't care if a teacher can have a gun. I, I, that's not my concern. My concern is doing whatever it takes to make our schools safe. And if people have reached a conclusion, we're simply giving teachers the opportunity to carry a gun, and then it's been proven to protect schools. I mean, why not? Right. right. But I personally believe that we need to have trained officers law enforcement officers at our schools. And what, what I've thrown about is, hey, look, we have 435,000 unemployed veterans, trained unemployed veterans. Why don't we utilize, why don't we utilize them to protect our schools? Why don't, you know, the cost of one resource officer, we can get four, four veterans to protect our schools. And I'm like, and then the concern is what's brought up is what if they're not mentally stable, which is screen them, but nothing is being done. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen other schools around my area, and I can tell you that nothing is being done. This exact same thing could happen at any other school at any other time. And furthermore, I think the exact same thing could happen tomorrow at my school. I, right. It would not be shocking because the security that we have is simply a veil. Right. You know, you know we, have, we have a camera system at my school that has a delay of 30 minutes. Right. Right. You know, you know. You, you just sound so well read, and you may or may not have read this gentleman, but C.S. Lewis often warned that what you do if you form the habit of seeing through things, like someone throws up an idea and you find a way to throw it, throw it down or strike it down. You know, like you say, look, let's have armed, let's have, let's have veterans protect us. And someone says, well, they might not be mentally stable. And they throw up an argument like that at every turn. And C.S. Lewis used to say, if you do that, if you form the habit of doing that, Pretty soon what you realize is you've stepped through everything meaningful and you're looking at nothing. And I think what we have to do is understand that when people throw up those quick responses like they do to shoot down your idea about veterans, we just have to reject, we have to reject their, their uh, distraction out of hand. We have to understand that your idea is a, is a great idea. We saw what happens when the schools do nothing. We saw what happens on February 14th when schools do nothing. So it's time to do something, and I'm with you. If that includes armed teachers, that's great. If it means armed veterans, that's great. If it means more resource officers, that's great. But it has to mean something because we can't do nothing. 
Exactly. That's why you know. That's why I pushed the Stop the Violence Act. Right. You know, not because it was not because it was hard, but because it had to be the first step. I mean, right. something fundamentally has to be done. You can't sit here and squabble over. You want to have a dream um, solution, but it's not going to happen. If you want to push a, a polar extreme polar solution, it's not going to happen. So I, that's why I've been pushing. I was like, hey, look. Let's do something. Let's push something that can happen first. Right on. Okay, and that's why I think the Stop School Violence Act, even though it didn't address guns, and it didn't address arming teachers or anything like that, it was a good first step. But I want to bring back the notion that at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we're not overstepping or we're not doing something that at the end of the day will harm our future. And, you know, I spoke to legislators, and that was my biggest concern I was, uh, when I was in Tallahassee. When I spoke to Florida, sen- uh, Florida senators, I was like, "Look, we have to make sure that we don't hurt our future, and we don't we, we don't hurt our state because the Second Amendment is what defends every other amendment, you know." And honestly, the biggest push for me to go to Washington D.C. was to see to make sure it would never happen. What happened to my school never happened again, but to make sure the Second Amendment won't be infringed upon. Right on. And even more so, the legislation being passed and being supported by the other side isn't reasonable. It isn't reasonable because, A, it's unconstitutional, and B, it's not going to work. It's not going to solve the issue at hand. Right on. Right on. Kyle, listen, man, you're so refreshing. I hate that it took a tragedy to bring you to the forefront, but I'm glad you're in the forefront. You're a voice of reason. I mean that. And I, Thank and, you, man. And your common sense is refreshing. Folks, you're listening to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, and we'll be back right after this. Hey, folks, I want to tell you about Breitbart News' Second Amendment newsletter, Downrange with A.W.R. Hawkins. features the top gun stories of the week, every week, and guest columnists like Gun Owners of America's Larry Pratt or Armed American Radio's Mark Walters. also features a review of a firearm or a firearm accessory each week. The newsletter downloads on Thursday, comes right to your email inbox. You can subscribe at Breitbart.com backslash AWR. This is Bullets with AWR Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is AWR Hawkins. Folks, welcome back to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. Wasn't it refreshing to have Kyle on? I mean, the voice of common sense. I don't think I can put it better than that. I have I have kind of a surprise this week. I have a second guest. My second guest is a girl who calls me dad. It's my, my oldest daughter, Hadley Hawkins. And I was kind of inspired to have Hadley on. And a lot of you out there, Sherry and Clint and others, are smiling right now. You're thinking about Hadley, but... Uh, I was inspired to have her on this week after Twitter banned a kid with Down syndrome from having a Twitter account because that kid took a pro-life position. It made my blood boil. And so Hadley's with me. Hadley is my daughter. She has Down syndrome. And uh, I haven't I haven't coached her at all what we're going to discuss because like, I'm just going to let her run with it. Right now, Darcy is going, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But Hadley, good to have you with us. Thank you. Glad to have you, A.W.R. Hawkins. A.W.R. Hawkins. Listen, Hadley. Listen. <laughs> tell me something. Tell me something. Why? Do, why does your dad own guns? What? 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 What do these guns mean to us? It means that we are protected because we support gun laws and we um, believe in guns, and it's part of your job, kind of thing. And it's part yeah. of my job, but. Tell me this, Hadley. Tell me this. And if, if, since we have guns, what do we know? We're asleep at night. If someone comes through the front door, what happens? I would wake up and tell you, and you would do your thing. I would do my thing. That's it. You're rocking right now, Hadley. You're rocking. Why don't you tell this? Why don't you tell these folks? These are good folks listening to us. Why don't you tell these folks? what your goal is, what you're going to do with your life. See, sometimes, Hadley, people treat people with Down syndrome like their life doesn't matter, but we know your life matters. So you tell me, what are you going to do with your life? Um, for right now, I'm going to be a hostess, and then five years from now, I'm going to move to L.A. with 
Shout out to Allison. Um, moved to L.A. with her, become a singer. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just give a shout out on my podcast? Yeah. Okay, keep going. Um, become a singer in L.A. Um, and do some acting and acrobatics and such as, and be famous. Wait, wait, hold up. Did you just throw out a Miss South Carolina such as? I Are, or were you going to say the Iraq? Was that next? No. Okay, keep going. Um, and then I'll be a singer, of course. And then after that, I'll just pursue my career into music and um, release my songs. Now, I'm asking you this. At, in that five-year plan, at what point do you become famous? Probably five years from now. It'll take the five years, the full five years? Yeah, because I'll be editing covers, vlogs, and yeah. Yeah. Now, what happens... What happens between now and then if, let's say, someone like Darcy makes some phone calls for you? Can we speed it up? Um, yes, I mean, they will to me because I would love to sing. It's been my passion since I was a baby. Ah, it's been your passion since you were a baby. Now, Hadley, tell me this. Tell me what you love about life. What do you love about life? Um, the most thing I like most is sushi and singing. Sushi and singing? If... <laughs> If we went to a sushi restaurant right now, what would you order? Probably the um, spicy tuna roll, the California roll. Both of those. One or the other or both? Both. Both. And a Diet Coke, of course. Yeah. Would you go ahead and order two Diet Cokes just so you had a backup? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the only reason I thought you might do that is you just did that for breakfast. So. True. True. Now, why don't you tell us something else? Hmm. Tell us what you love to do. In the summer, do you love to swim? Do you love to go out on a boat? Do you love to stay inside and watch TV? What do you like to do? Well, I do like to get out sometimes, but sometimes I like to watch like really cool TV shows. Right, and then and then you have friends. You like to hang out with your friends. Yes, I do. One of your friends picked you up last night. Yes, her name was Ann Hell, and we had the blast. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think it's good for people to hear your voice ads. I think. I think outlets like Twitter should be ashamed of themselves and uh, to to block someone. It's just, it's unbelievable. Anyway, yeah. tell me something, Madley. Tell yeah. me what you would say to the world. If the world was to, were to ask you, tell me why life is so important. What would you say to them? Well, life is the key, of course. Um I feel like everyone should stand up for who they are and what there is. Because every day on Instagram, I comment things that encourage and lift up. Because that's what my mom always tell me. And to say nice words and not bad words and negative comments. Well, right on. Folks, uh, you've been listening to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins. And we've been fortunate to have as a guest this week, Hadley Hawkins. Thank we you. got her. We got her before things got busy because you may have detected in five years she's going to be famous. At that time, she'll be too big to be on the uh, Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, right? You'll be too busy then? Yeah, because I have sound check almost every night. Oh, sound check? Yeah. Golly. <laughs> almost every night? Yeah, basically. Basically. Now, what do you, are, are you going to involve Darcy in any of this? Uh, she's going to be one of my like backup dancers and... Just to be with me on the road with me. Have you cleared this with her? Yes. Okay. I, I highly doubt what you just said is true, but that's okay. <laughs> Folks, you're listening to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, and I've uh, been talking to my daughter Hadley there. And uh, so glad you tuned in this week. Listen, tell your friends, your family members, your coworkers to subscribe to the podcast. You just go to iTunes, do a search for it. Uh, once you subscribe, which is free. It'll download to your phone every Tuesday. If you have an Android, you can get it as well. And if you want to go shortcut, you can go to Breitbart.com. And every Tuesday, the newest podcast is uploaded there. And you can just uh, you can just listen to it there. And so uh, I'm so glad you tuned in today. Glad you got to hear Kyle. He had so much to say. Glad you got to hear Hadley. She had so much to say. And you know what? Wait, before I go, Hadley, I forgot. Hmm. Do your Trump imitation. Okay, um, I want to build a wall. Oh, nice. Well, I wish he would build that wall. Anyway, guys, you all have a great week, and until we talk again, you remember, more guns equal more freedom.